right, and we're live. All right. Hey, you guys. Uh, thanks for listening to the Thought Box podcast. Uh, if you guys like what you are hearing, please go to our Facebook page. Give us a like. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the Thought Box PC. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, the Thought Box podcast. And uh, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Spirit Animal Pet Sitting. Listen, if you guys like to take pictures of your little pups and you cherish your furry little loved children forever and still frame, if you want to do this, this is the place to go. If you want to keep them in line with some easy to learn and incredibly effective training, uh, this is the place to take your pups. Uh, If you go and uh, she does something that I think is pretty cool. Uh, You get some overnight stays in your home uh, with one of their amazing personnel. Also, she does this thing that uh, I haven't heard of too much, but I really like. It's canine camp out. And what happens here is uh, you uh, you go away for a trip. Your little pooch goes on a camping trip. So you're both on a trip here. Uh, they go on a little retreat uh, where they get to hike, swim, be outdoors, be in nature. And this is important to your dogs. A lot of you guys are working nine to five jobs and your pet sits inside all day long. And he just sits on that couch and just has treats and snoozes all goddamn day and lives a glorious life. But it's important for them to get out and get uh, get some exercise. So give her a call. She'll take you out. They'll go have a great time. And she'll take pictures, return them. Yeah, you won't regret it. It'll be worth every single bit. So for norm, those of you that have a normal person job or uh, maybe you just don't like the outdoors <laughs> and you just don't want to get outside, just uh, let your pet be healthy and adventurous. Uh, so go to spiritanimalpetsitting.com for more information. Please. All right. Okay, everyone. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen. I bring to you once again, again Tara. Valletta, she's my bestie. Yo. Yo, she's pretty much just uh, doesn't go away, <laughs> and uh, so she's here because uh, she's my once a week ride or die bitch. Para, how's it going? Our day. What's up? It's going awesome. It's going awesome. I'm on vacay. Vacay. We're you're headed to San Francisco in the morning. San Francisco. Yeah. Remember that time I have to wake up at the about crack of dawn. Remember that time you have to wake up at being? 4:30 in the morning to take me to the airport? I don't mind. It's not that far. We look pretty. Damn close. straight, you don't mind. It'll be perfect. 10 minutes away. You got this. And yep. then you're going to go to work anyway. You got to San Francisco to see her lover. Mm. Lover. Yes. Him and my friend. Oh. What's his name? You want to say hi to him? Um, no. Chris? What's up, Chris? What's up, Chris? Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. And I'm taking care of. We're not going to survive at the house. <laughs> I made God a knows list. I, God knows I can't cook. I made a list of survival techniques it's bad. and tactics. It's bad. And I'm going to see my friend Ryan, too, who I haven't great. seen in a year. All right. Which is awesome. Hello, um, Ryan. So, an unconventional woman. This. How many times has this movie been made? I'm reading the title of this article that Tara was browsing over, and it's got that stereotypical feel to it. Please tell me it's not the same thing where the different teacher comes into the classroom and changes the lives. And it's cliche, cliche, it's, cliche. It's not a movie. Success. But this is, is in the, real life. But is it the same thing? Like it actually happened? It happened in Providence. It's relevant to me. What happens in Providence? It was... Um, Rhode Island. This te- yeah, this teacher, um, she was a principal. Mm-hmm. She turned around a struggling urban school, and it's Pleasant View Elementary School. See, movies do come true. That's why I'm gonna have a dragon one day, just like How to Train Your Dragon, and he's gonna be calling. I'm gonna name Toothless, and it's gonna be fast, and call him Night Fury. <laughs> Yeah, I watched that movie a couple of times. I'm not gonna lie. Have you seen that movie? It makes me think of um, Dangerous Minds. I haven't seen that. I'm spending my time watching quality movies. How to Train Your Dragon. One and two. Ugh. Want to play some Twister? I love Do you remember the mats movies. that you used to sit on? Did you have mats in kindergarten? Remember, you know what I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I used to love? Remember the, the thing that in gym you guys, you throw it up in the air and it was like a parachute. Oh, you'd go the under big it one. And then you'd like And you'd get like 25 it. people yeah, around yeah, it and yeah. you'd like go yeah, like this with yeah. it. Make and waves what out was of that? it. Ooh. Um, I don't know. It was like a cut. We're going to find out. You know what they also like let us color. do at this time? They let us take this rope in this like one inch mat that was maybe a little bit softer than concrete and you could climb all the way to the top of your gymnasium without really any safety protection at all. Yeah, I love those things. Right, those are fun. You sit, uh, throw it up real high, you run underneath it and you're trapped and then you just get on the outside and you do it again and that's entertainment for kids. Yeah, we used to do it outside. That's all it takes. That was a really good time. We only got to do that on special occasions. Like, it was a special day when that thing got to come out. Well, that's just dumb. Does that mean that I... I mean, that should be life in general. Just playing with a big parachute. I wish All every gym class was there. Just like, here's a parachute. You know one of those students would float that off the top of the, the building one time, though. I'd do it. Oh, like attempt to fly? 
if they gave you that parachute every day, you'd get more and more intelligent. More and more daring with it, and one day you might just decide to take the plunge. Do some evil Canadian style shit. Surf down it like a champ. Ugh. Like a champ. I am. I'm currently going through my Facebook, looking at all like, the things that my friends are interested in. That's destruction. That's all it ever is. Death Nation with crumbling bridges and roads, out. excited to build you gotta giant get off wall. That social media. It's so much fun though. You gotta get off that social media. Speaking of social That's media, bad. <laughs> it's real bad. <laughs> Coming home after the party. Yeah. Look at it. That's what I'm watching right now. Yeah. Kids. Kids falling. There's nothing better than kids just falling All the information down. is at your fingertips right now, and you're just watching some kid have the worst day of his life. Yeah, it's really cute. Stumbling back and forth in a puddle. This so poor cute. kid's got he's got a blue jacket on, and he's just trying to walk, trying to walk, and he's just face planting in dirt. I mean, he's all right. He's a kid. All kids bunk day. Back. Every day. Do you know what I really want to bring up, but I don't want to bring up at the same exact time? Farmer Joe. Uh, oh, I was her. gonna say Kim Davis. Oh, fucking Kim Davis! Can you give me a break in it's life? This is a situation. For one, that I hate that these are the most like if it's said that this has to be a relevant topic in society, and it has to be like one of the most important ones that's flooding all the social media. But the beauty of it, if you can find any beauty in this ridiculous situation, <laughs> is Farmer Joe. That if you go watch her video, right to the right. <laughs> Of her video, about halfway through, they pan out to the most beautiful man wearing these old school overalls and a straw hat with his hands in the air. And they're all oh, the champions singing Eye of the Tiger, getting sued for $1.2 million, rightfully so. But the questions that are posed Who is this guy? Why is he there? Why is he wearing farmer jeans in 2015? Do you know what my bet is? That's a goddamn 17th husband that you had or whatever. It could be. <laughs> it could be. Listen here, we need to get our best and brightest up on stage. And I'm sorry, but if your husband's wearing farmer jeans, who are you to judge? Listen, they were washed last week. Who are you to judge who people marry? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say, say no to farmer husband. jeans. If I could not wear a shirt ever and just oh get away God. with wearing farmer jeans. You just want to wear jeans. no shirt in a far- Shirts farmer are in the jeans, way. Shirts are in the way. That's They're clearly in the way. And I just Obviously. operate better without them. I think that's for you and Cisco. No. It's just it's just a shirtless household, mm. minus me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we could game change it. Give me a pair of overalls. <laughs> yeah, I I'll wear we those could. all day, every day. I'll cut them off. I'll make my overall Daisy Dukes. You don't want to wish that upon <laughs> yourself because I will go to the store oh. and get a pair of overalls for you and force you to wear them. You wouldn't have to force. I'm volunteering oh, great. to wear these awesome overalls with no. You'll never see a shirt again. I'll probably donate them all to Goodwill. Wow. What about work? Who works? You. You most certainly do. I'm pretty sure that they're going to be <laughs> complete. They'll be cool with it. Like Skylar's just wearing his overalls. It you might no be thing. cool, but you'll never be Vincent Price with a 70s porn stash dressed as Dracula cool. It's fact. True. That is a fact. And that's beautiful. No one can be that cool. Someone's leaving and going on a date. I believe we need to say goodbye. Goodbye, date. Have fun with your cool little backpack. So, just to give you a I heads up. Really like, quickly, not... I know we've got this going, but can you hug me? Because I won't be Say here. goodbye. Say goodbye properly. Tara's going to San Francisco. She has to brave the skies. Please don't die and live. And let my dog live. Have fun in San Fran. Thanks. Tara, can I show you something? Have fun friends? tonight. Be, be safe. safe. Don't, don't do anything I wouldn't do. do. You're not really talking. You're not saying anything. anything. That's <laughs> the most open-ended shit I've ever heard in my life. What? What are you asking me? Uh, you're going on a plane trip, so I'm going to show you something... Don't Very show me anything exciting. scary about planes because I will murder you. That's yeah, a thing. This one, this has a happy ending. Okay, so are you on my thing? Oh God! Take okay. a look. Just wait for it. All right. Okay. Wait for it. Okay. Okay. Are you there? Yep. All right. Oh, it's so. Southwest too. Yeah, Great. Southwest is flying. They're up in the air, and then out of nowhere, drone, drone crash. <laughs> there's a drone, and somebody's flying. You know, way higher than they should be, and uh, we have a beautiful, beautiful view of the city. And oh then you don't have god. a wing anymore. Oh my god. Right? And there's drones everywhere. Everywhere. It's gonna be you. What do you do now? That drone. You know what you do? You go kick in that front of that cab and you save that plane yourself. <laughs> well, I'm assuming it didn't really affect the flight. No, right? that was fake as fuck. Okay. That was really fake. I had to look into that. I was like, really? Like, I feel like that would have been on bigger up. news. But uh it looked pretty well. The video was well done. For uh all you out there that are wondering what we're talking about, eventually we're going to be able to screen share this with yeah. uh, with the video. So I'm sorry. What are, I'm sorry, I'm playing this. That day is not today. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, uh, that was the end of it? Did you see that? Solid. I like their eyes. I don't. De- I definitely don't know what they are. Okay, so they are twenty percent of America. <laughs> are you gonna get me in trouble for? Uh, did you see that fat shaming thing that went around from that girl that yeah. posted? Yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. we have here is some I sort of that. blue creature that looks like it's a raindrop. like a, almost like a Teletubby, but furrier but bigger and furrier and a- more alien like better and more like alien-like. like glitter eyebrows and like more doughy eyes like dough dough going, deer Tess. eyes keep going right you're doing it for it's me the only way i could that's great that's great did you see the video responses to the video response of the fat shaming the video response. So the skinny blonde chick, I can't remember her name at all, I made the original fat shaming video. That okay. Calling fat shaming because okay. people keep throwing that word around. Sure. And then the, yeah. th- there was a very popular girl that did a like answer video saying why you know I have a condition, why are you being mean, blah blah blah. Sure. Okay. Basically makes a bunch of excuses. You know, I don't know. It's I don't side with either of them because I'm not making these fucking videos, well, but now I. I have to comment on them. Neither because they're driving me insane. I most She's still making think... excuses, and one person's probably being a little over the top. We don't have to necessarily be right. assholes, but we should be conscious of our mind and bodies. Sure. We're going to On an individual basis. I don't think either one of them should have made those videos. I but they really were there, stupid. and now there are people making videos off of those videos. It's just going to continue to travel Nothing's on original. And on and on and on Nothing's and on original and on. anymore. That's why. It's the Matrix. Nothing's original. It's the th- exception <laughs> of originality. That's great. And There's no such thing. You know what? I wake up in the morning. I'm thinking about... I keep hearing this. People keep going to flip phones. I'm thinking about doing it. What do you mean? I wake up in the morning, and what do I do? I sit a half hour on Facebook and usually get myself all riled up for some reason on something stupid. Yeah. Like some lady coming out the eye of the fucking tiger being a champion. And then, and then getting sued I go take my morning it. shit, <laughs> and I check Twitter, and I check the rest of things, and then I shower, and then I, I just kind of want to kiss it all away and only go to social media when I'm at a computer... Meaning to do social media business. I feel like I can mm. utilize my life, you know, think my own thoughts, have a great life the, without it right. for a little bit. Maybe for, I'll try it out for a couple months. Plus, you got that baller ass flip phone. Can I actually, can What's I talk up? about a subject yeah. that really pisses me off? What pisses you off? The issue with Planned Parenthood at the moment uh, is driving me absolutely the, insane. The dead baby farm one? Yes. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. Yeah. Considering that 28 Republicans, who, mm-hmm. by the way, are all men already pisses me off, have this argument that they don't want to fund Planned Parenthood with the $500 that they normally get through the government, which doesn't go to any type of abortions Mm -hmm. at all. The only reason they don't want to fund is because of the fact that they're against abortions, religious freedom, everyone taking it out of fucking control, right? And what that money is used for is for um, cancer cancer testing, testing. um... Uh, sexually transmitted disease testing mm-hmm. for uh, those in low-income and, and poverty families, and birth control for girls that can't afford it. And that's the funding they want to cut. Yeah, because to me it makes sense to where you have a 15, 16-year-old female who, nature, biologically speaking, is trying to have a baby. Their body's like, hey, it's time, and then they got these dudes Dudes are hanging around. They've got a boner that nobody wants to do anything with. And they want to stick it anything. Of course, they're going to get sexually active. And what if they can't all afford birth control? And even, you know, from the adult side, not everybody is financially able to do this. Right. And not everybody needs a kid dropped in their lap. And are you saying that we just need to deny our biological need to reproduce or at least practice? Right. Just, can we do it safely? No, they prefer abstinence yeah. until with, marriage. Well, don't you know? Don't, there's my North Dakota. Don't, don't, you, don't know you know that it's... <laughs> their way okay that's the it's their beliefs and that needs to be your beliefs too because it's the right way i know it's bullshit and the problem is that they're never going to get rid of abortion because that's absolutely not going to happen and what they're outraged over is that the fetal tissue from these abortions is being sold to go towards things like stem cell research like alzheimer's and cancer research problem being is once you cut the funding there's two, two things that are going to happen. happen. You're either going to approve it, and the fetal tissue is then going to go towards things that we need, like stem cell research for Alzheimer's and cancer, or it's going to get thrown in the fucking trash. Those this are the only true. options you have. This is so true. by not funding it, you're instead choosing not to let it go towards the good of society here's, and just have it thrown out. Here's my issue. The only issue I possibly have with 
I keep calling it baby farming, but it makes it, you know, you make a bad joke about <laughs> it. Awful, it's a little yeah. bit easier. This little baby farming they got going on. Humor is, makes everything easier. I'm terrified that once money gets into it somehow and somebody's making money and there's a way for a big company to make a profit that somebody's going to run wild and it's going to turn into another one of the corporations that right. just or run among and aren't necessarily in the best interest. It needs to be regulated, but it's they can't even decide on whether or not they want to uh, let these women abort Approve their fetuses. Yeah. And so now they're talking about what happens to the afterbirth. They, it's never going to they're never going to come to a conclusion. This is going to go on for on and on mm-hmm. and on. And so many more I mean, time doesn't yeah. stop. Oh, my God. Can you look at my screen? Speaking uh, of the guy with the overalls. Oh, there he is. He's Wizard gorgeous. of Oz cast reunited. <laughs> <laughs> You've got two dudes in suits holding. This headline is everything. I don't want to be too mean to this lady, but she drives me crazy. She reminds me of something that should be sitting underneath of a bridge, <laughs> grabbing billy goats coming across the top. She's a troll. She's, she's horrible, a and she's pushing. She's she mess. she has a job, and she's supposed That's to do her job, really but she's funny. pushing her religion all over the place. And she brings this beautiful specimen of a man, and he's got to be like six across. five. He's a giant. And a straw hat, overalls, and a long sleeve white shirt with gray he's sleeves. He's the um, he's the um, what's that guy in Wizard of Oz? The Scarecrow. The Scarecrow. He's yeah, also a hundred percent not wearing shoes. I it's not showing it, but I know they're not there. They're not, oh. <laughs> there's no chance <laughs> he's got assume. shoes on. I mean, what do you think's the percentage? Per- Give me a percentage. Ten. Ten percent chance. <laughs> I'm saying there's ten percent chance that he knows what a shoe is. Oh my god, that's so funny. No, he's probably a nice guy. Um, something Awkward about Julia silence. Roberts. Yeah, uh, you know what? He probably is a really nice no, guy. He's, he's just got really close-minded views because of how he was raised. Maybe, or maybe and he's that's a dick. What I, ultimately, see, that's what it comes down we to. We don't know any of these people. That's I the was, problem. No, we're I know about you have no this. idea. That's the problem yep. with internet and social media is people just take one thing and and they can run with it forever and ever and ever and ever and continue to talk about the same thing over and don't over. Don't make assumptions. Remember that's the four bad. agreements? The four agreements that I talked about. Speak with Maybe integrity. Yeah. Don't make assumptions. Yeah. Don't take anything personally. Yeah. And always do your best. Those are the. Do you believe four. in participation medals? Like you should get a trophy. No. Jo- okay, thank you. <laughs> then I abide by those because that, la- <laughs> no, that last don't. one, like always do your best. Oh no, it's more on a. Per- it's more on your best. Oh, you did okay. It's and more on a personal thing. Like, like Jimmy thinks he's a champion, but best, Jimmy's not a champion. Your best on an individual basis is going to vary from day to day, depending on the you know the mood that you're in, if you're sick, all that kind of stuff. But no matter where you're at in your life, always try and do your best. So, like something simple like procrastination, which I struggle with majorly, especially at work. If I you always don't know struggle that I'm with a little bit better, of procrastination. I don't trust something. you. I, agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree with you. But I always know that I'm going to feel better after I actually just do the act itself. So I, I say to myself, just, just do your best. You know, once you finish it, you're going to feel better. So it's like that. That's what it means by always do your yeah. best. Not, okay. not like always do your best, and we can give you a medal because you participated. You, d- <laughs> you <laughs> talk dumb. You didn't finish the race because you weren't even good enough that's stupid failure yeah. has to be an option for success i don't know why we keep telling these kids that they can't fail yeah because I that's think really detrimental you yeah. gotta you don't know the highs unless you have the lows you definitely totally. can't appreciate the highs if you don't know the lows yeah. I, re- I still remember i mean i played sports all the way through college i played football up in college too even in college one of the most traumatizing memories i have is this it was nate he was o-lineman and we were doing this drill and i was a running back and it was a uh an o-line and a deep a seasoned o-lineman Okay. A freshman, most likely red shirt. Uh, excuse me. He's a D lineman. It's a D lineman. Okay. I was on offense. He's all football. The, huh? the O lineman is the freshman red shirt, and I'm the running back. And I can make one move, and I got to stay in between these 10 yards worth of cones. And he's got to get me. He's got to tackle me. And what I see is I hear the whistle blow, and I take two steps. And before I even make a move, Big Nate takes my lineman, picks him up into the air, turns him sideways, and puts him on his back. My lineman was like a 300-pound lineman. He was not a small dude. Oh, my God. But Nate was just an animal. He's one of the guys where the shoulder pads don't even look like they fit. And he just puts a helmet on like halfway. They're falling like, out. Oh, my God. And he just eats gasoline for breakfast. Ugh. And I'm looking him right in the eye. I have no momentum. And I, I was like, here's the deal. If I make one move, he's just going to crawl over to me and eat me. So I'm just going to lower my shoulder, not make a juke move, and just hit him as hard as I can. And I leaned down and I put, I was probably about 210, 215. I put all my weight into him. I ran hard as, out of nowhere. 
I'm looking at the sky. And he's standing over the top of me. And the defense is going fucking bananas because I didn't even make it to the line. He hit me so oh he hit me like a fucking freight train. It felt like I felt all the air come out of me. And I just remember going, Ugh! so dangerous. And I'm looking at the sky and he I'm holding the football like a running back still tucked in my arm and he goes, Whoa, steps over me and slaps the ball out of my hand. I've never felt like less of a human being in my life. But you know what that loss? That loss stuck with me, and I don't want to feel like that again. And so the next time I'm training, and the next time I'm doing anything, you can just relate that, that feeling of just, oh, man, that's this is the worst, and not want that, that again. Well, you need, good right. you need that to succeed. Succeed. Unfortunately, I got far too many. I think everybody has far too many of them tails. Those, them tails? Those tails? I'm like, just, I'm, I'm on TED Talk right now. Oh, switching. It's so about TED Fellows. What are we TEDing? No, they're... A Ted, the TED Fellowship is open. Oh, I heard twice a I year the this. TED Fellows program opens like, applications to find a new class of extraordinary thinkers and doers. I don't like doing these. I heard things, but I heard that TED is kind of and you have to be. I realize when you get a bunch of people together and you're running a schedule, you can't let them like run run amok and hope that they'll oh, be there. Oh yeah, you. Told but me you about basically those, yeah. get put on like prison time when yeah. when you go to do it, and you're like, oh, you got to be here at eight and stay here the whole time. Well, I want to experience But that's just. That. I mean, they're making a production, so I guess you can't bitch too much about that. Oh but my that God. does. Kind of suck, and you make me. They make you roommate with somebody. Maybe they change that. I shit. really want to apply. Maybe I'm making all this up. I really want to apply, because I I want to. I really want to do a TED talk on um, um, culture and happiness in the workplace. Yeah. More than anything. So, Miss Valletta here gets hired on with a company. What is the company? Are you allowed to say it's that? It's a wholesale distributor. A wholesale distributor. In Austin. And within what two weeks, you're like. Three I'm weeks. not three weeks. You're like, I'm not doing this. This is dumb. And you're like, I'm, I'm out. And they go, hey, how about you stay here and become one of our managers? Yes. And Tara's been doing this. I'm a good workplace employee for a long time now. She's kind of an OG at it. And she goes, thanks nah, to Moo. I don't know. And uh, yeah, all thanks to Moo. Yep. And they put some good morals in her. Something. They did something, something better like that. for her. Got some <laughs> nice vitamins somewhere. Among other things. Anyway, she, go, she goes, <laughs> they go, hey. Name your price. And she names her price and they do it and they cut her hours. And now she works for a ridiculous wage over what they originally hired her for, for half the hours, just basically building, building their team, making them more efficient. Making, right. Making them, well, that's the goal and plan. Yeah. Um, it depends on how suggestive they actually are and whether or not they're willing to implement those things because I've already submitted them a plan of things I want to do. Do you think it'll be met with resistance? Yes. I think everything Severe I do there resistance. will be met with resistance. Yeah. From the employees or from the... Well, because you're... From management even. From the owner. Well, from the owner and my manager. do you expect to change if the top isn't on board? That's a really great question that I will most certainly ask them if they don't approve what I need. What are you... Uh, what, types <laughs> of thing, what type of thing are you trying to get approved? Um, What's well, like top on the list? Well... We multitask a lot. The customer service reps multitask a lot. So, um, and they're working, like the the software in general, they're working off Windows XP, which mm-hmm. is from like, oh, I don't know, like 2001. <laughs> so that alone is a problem. And yeah. then additionally, we don't have dual screens. So they're working off one screen to do up to five tasks at a time. So we need dual screens. The fact that there aren't dual screens is absolutely amazing to me. Um, the, the system that we use for our invoicing is just very clunky and kind of old and isn't used appropriately. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to do manually once we print out the invoice and then like go back in, make necessary changes, print it out again once those changes are made. All this stuff could be done within the system if we either one, knew how to work the system appropriately or if we got a new system that was more efficient and productive. I feel like it sounds like what you're describing is they came up with a good business model a long time ago and didn't grow and evolve with technology and other companies. That's totally what it is. There were multiple people that owned the company and sold it. So through those transitions, it was just a a matter of um, like maintaining rather than um, properly growing with the technology. That's that's impossible for a business, especially with anything. I mean, nowadays with the ability that something can grow and as much as you can utilize technology, if you're not hopping on board, you're going to get left behind quick. No, it's a disaster. And, and then not even that. And it sounds but like a good company that just isn't is. making the right decisions. And how many of those companies are out there? The worst part for me is that not only like the technology part of it's bad. And that's why we need to make those kinds of improvements. But 
the worst part is that they have these great people that are working there that could easily do other things for them outside of the regular mundane day to day and they don't empower their employees at all to think that they can do anything but their job so they never use them to like make training documents mm -hmm. or to um, train new hires or like to they never instill confidence in them in their job skills that they have job skills outside of what they're already doing in, wow. in their rate so as far as they're concerned they're just customer service agents and they hate their job but like you can make customer service agents enjoy their job if you give them something enjoyable to do something outside of their their regular job description i had a roommate that worked in a customer service department when he moved down here and uh basically they threw him parties every friday mm -hmm. with like beer and yeah all, like a happy hour kind yeah of thing. and they just had a great time and he said like the job itself is just a job mm. but just working for everything else in the environment and you know it was downtown and it was in a really nice area and they've got like nice break rooms and ping pong mm. set up it makes all the difference it's it's a combination of two things i think i think it has to be those physical things like it has to be a happy hour it has to be you know you need to have fun things to do in the office like yeah. like well, i even want to just get them um nerf basketball sets mm -hmm. to put on the back of their cubicle so mm -hmm. while they're working they can like free throw to each other's cubicle yeah like just stupid stuff like that but on top of it you also have to the management also has to cultivate the environment of of um, empowerment and honesty, transparency. Um, you have to have a complete open door policy. They have to, they have to trust and respect you. That's something that you have to build. You can't just expect that to happen on its own. So you can. It's great if you have a nice physical environment, but if along with that doesn't come a sense of higher purpose outside of just helping shitty customers, it's not worth it. So you have to, you have to show them a higher purpose than what the job really entails. True, and yeah. I, I feel like you're also allowing them to stimulate their mind while yeah. they work too, which is important, especially if you work totally. in a job like that where you are kind of locked in a box mm -hmm. for the good portion of the day, you know. Who feels like not being themselves yeah. all day long. And just doing, no turning into a person that has to, you know, you have to be, it's a, uh, is there like it's customer service, so mm -hmm. you basically are dealing with people that aren't the happiest with something yeah, that's going like, on. Yeah, and like, one thing for me that's, that's really that annoying wears on you. is, um, like I, I came in and I, I took the name of the company and made it an acronym to cultivate, like the acronym was certain words, um, to cultivate a certain kind of environment. Mm -hmm. And one of them, um, included that I want them to be as genuine as possible with the customers. So I want them to show their personality. If they, if the customer starts talking about something that interests them, I want them to have a conversation with the customer, not just make it robotic. And every single one of them was like, Oh, well, I mean, they don't want us to do that. Like the company gave them the impression they want, they that want they you don't to be a robot. Right. They don't want the talk time long because the longer the talk time, the less calls that are coming in, the less money the company has coming in. Once again. But ultimately, the That's experience not how you get that a you better give, customer. No. And the experience that you give the customer is what they take away and then talk to people about. Like you're you're I'm trying to provide a customer experience, not just another mundane phone call that they have to make. I want them to enjoy it. And I want the rep to enjoy it. Because that's their job is sitting there all fucking day. You know how boring that is? You don't make it interesting for them. You're not going to have retention. It's, I, I totally believe that. And I mean, everybody's had to call a customer service line and nobody's excited to call the <laughs> customer service line. And I've, I've had a couple that, you know, they answer the phone and they, you know, the tone in the voice that they hate their job. Totally. Thanks for calling. Ma, ma, ma. What can I do? And you say what's your whole deal? And like, well, there's not a lot we can do. Uh, and you just you you don't have any hope, and you just get sad. And if you have somebody that's high hype, not high, Jesus. If you have somebody that's <laughs> well, like that's high energy, you know, <laughs> high gener, high, yeah, high, they have a great conversation. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, high energy and wants to help you solve your problem. And even if they're faking it, you know, fake it till you make it. Just you know, make it a doesn't matter. Good experience. It makes a huge when difference. When you hang up the phone, you know, you don't feel drained. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hang up the phone with yep. the you know bad long customer service because you've been on hold for like two hours in the first place anyway. Sometimes, right. and you're just like, oh, I gotta go. And, a lot, and if that is the case, right? As a customer service agent, they have two options. You you get on the phone and already you're you know you're in despair because you've been waiting for them and it's customer service and who the fuck wants to deal with that? And 
So as an agent, they now have two choices. They can either feed into that feeling that you're projecting onto them on the mm-hmm. phone. Which is and, easy to meet them. And, it's, you got to meet them at the level. If you meet them down here, it's it not going to be good It just keeps going downward. Anybody. Because then you don't sound helpful. The person's already upset because they were waiting. Now you don't sound helpful. Now they're down here. Now they give you an even worse attitude. Now because of that worse attitude, you project onto them an even worse attitude. And it just keeps going down the level. However, if you say, no matter how this person comes on the phone with me, I'm going to project a, an air of helpfulness and... Um, authority and solution problem solving and um, my personality. I'm going to be genuine through the Mm -hmm. entire experience. You have the ability to influence the behaviors and attitudes of another person. That for me is the most rewarding part of customer service. Like I can take someone's shitty day in one phone call and make it better if I so choose. But that's the thing. You have to empower people to look at customer service that way. That's not how most people look at it. Reward, rewarding is not a word I usually associate with customer service. No. But the way you make it sound, you make it sound like it's a very tangible thing. It is. People and and any manager any manager involved. can do that. You, you just have to know how to coach and mentor people to completely change their perspective in that environment. But, but that's the thing is that, and this we could get on with capitalism, but <laughs> companies are just run the wrong way and management isn't trained correctly because they come all up versus tenure. All companies or do you think? No, just not companies all companies. In general? Not all companies. The it's mostly dream? large. It's, mar- it's mostly large companies, large corporate companies. Corporations. Yeah, corporations. Mm-hmm. Um, startups are definitely changing that mentality, which I think is great. I would hope that that kind of filters through to corporations. It would cost corporations a lot of money to change the way that they are now, but I think it's worth it in the long run. Well, if they fight them, I mean, if even if you're a huge corporation, I know you can be the big dog and squash a lot of people, but it's it's a little fires popping up at your feet, and that's not. No. Yeah. If you have little fires popping up at your feet, eventually you're gonna get caught on fire. It's not gonna be right, and it's, it's gonna, gonna spread so, throughout the organization, which is what's happening. That's work together, problem. people. Work together. Yeah. Come together. Work together. Reach to out the terrible letter. Happy. Have her come to your company. Yes. And revolutionize whatever process you Management consulting. With. Management consulting. I would love to do. And culture consulting. To How's, to transform to transform a, a feeling of a company from the inside. Okay. Culture culture consulting is kinda alien to me. How would you change a culture where explain this to me a little bit. Well, it has to do like with when a I lot. think culture Depends. I think of like where somebody's from. Oh yeah, no, but no. That's I not, mean like um like the the culture that's cultivated within a company, which is done by a combination of people, the, the brand, um, like brand ambassadors, if they're in the company. Ma- management is the biggest part of it. Ma- management, everything that happens at that management level trickles down. So it usually starts at executive management where they're so far removed from the floor at this point that they can no longer understand it from the perspective of the lower workers. Mm -hmm. So like Donald Trump style where I've been a billionaire and now I'm going to lead a nation. Right, right, right. I'm not giving out my political views. His inflated ego has just gotten him to a point where everybody treats him like a normal human being for his whole life, right? Might as well keep him in a leadership position, right? Whatever. He knows exactly how... Oh yeah, I mean, he knows, feels, right. Right? he knows exactly how the middle class feels. He knows how Mexicans feel. I mean, he knows how literally everyone in the world feels because he's well, Donald Trump. When you have that much hair. money, you could pay to feel how other people feel. You know what? Somebody else. <laughs> it's tried all to his feel hair. All his secrets. Somebody else tried to feel, and he looked at him, and he said, "You're fired." <laughs> You're fired. He had it all. He had it all figured out. I'm not a huge fan. Someone needed. Eh. Um. But yeah, no, I don't think he can be. But look, look what we're dealing with once again. I know it's like the Kardashians crashing the news all the time. You're like, why are you in my ears? I don't want this. It's bad. How is this a thing? But you can't really control it's, it. Yeah, people find it to they be can, entertaining. Even people that I like, girls that I know back home, they watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and I'm like, that's an impossible show it's to watch. Like brain I'll stop talk- goo. Like it just it it turns my brain into mush. It, that's like what it's I can't doing. listen to that. It's the worst programming on the planet, but I can't. it's views and they make a lot of money off that. There was a lot of speaking of which there was a young girl that has a YouTube video that I just saw on Facebook today. She's probably no more than like fifteen, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I listened to probably the first thirty seconds and I couldn't get through any more than that because I couldn't one, I couldn't tell if she was serious or not. It could have been a sarcasm She's thing. Been but she was like, why do we have more than one language? Why don't we just have American? We don't need Canadian language. 
and we don't need Mexican language and we don't need British speak. <laughs> and like once it got there, I was like, no, brain is done. Like, I don't I care if she turns this around. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't last any longer than thirty Unfortunately, seconds. Unfortunately, that too level long. of you can't Ignorance. say the R word, but yeah, that Ignorance. that <laughs> is uh, that's a good replacement. <laughs> it's painful. And if she's trolling, don't troll like that. Don't troll with my heart. No, it's I not know. Funny. No. I can't laugh that hard. Um, yeah, me and Cisco were talking about um, ignorance. Did you see the picture? Her. Is it was it that blonde? No, there was a different one. I think you were looking at it the other day as well. It's some blonde girl, and she's got the YouTube a, video. Yeah, of with course. The big she's boobs. got monster and like tits, and her side. face is caked down with makeup, and she's just giving her opinion on if dogs have brains. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe you're cute, or maybe I hope I can't ever come in contact with you because all I ask I'm holding is that, breath till I pass out. All I, can't I ask be is that you. before you post, <laughs> if you're being serious, before you post a picture like that, you're already posting the the, the video or the pic to the internet, mm -hmm. right? That means you have, boobs, you have the internet boobs. at your disposal to research and educate yourself on the topic first. So maybe that's necessary before you just spit fire out. Verbal diarrhea. Spit hot fire. Her points were on. Spit like she fire. She was on point. Sure. Her eyebrows were on. Uh, on fleek. On fleek. On fleek the Eyebrows on fleek the fuck. <laughs> All right. Johnny we're, and Doja. We're going. Shout out to you on that one. <laughs> we're going along with this. Tara, like always, it's a great time talking to you. We're going to have to wrap this it's up It's always here. a pleasure talking with you, too. Please, if you like what you hear, and even if you don't, I want you to support anyways because <laughs> I love you a lot. Go to my Facebook page, The Thought Box Podcast. Give us a like. Go to us on Twitter at The Thought Box PC, follow us there, PC. and uh, go to YouTube if you want to do the trifecta and be a champion, and uh, subscribe on YouTube. All right, motherfuckers, I had a good time. Me too, thing. as All always. Right. Bye bye. Bye.